You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. What a beautiful day for horses in the morning. You are listening to the number one horse podcast in the world. Here is your entertaining look at the horse world and the people in it. I'm Dr. Allison Marshall. And I'm Dr. John Langlois. And you are listening to the special monthly Chi University episode of Horses in the Morning on the Horse Radio Network for October 22nd. Good morning, horse world. Welcome to our once a month look at traditional Chinese veterinary medicine with the Chi University. John, we are lucky, lucky, lucky this month because we get to have the amazing Dr. Shea on our podcast today. It's pretty exciting. Yes, it is. It is. I, 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 we go back a long way, as all of us do. I think I met Dr. Shea in 1994 and became friends with him and actually played ping pong together. So we go back way back. And and again, he. it took me a while to come to his school to learn his discipline, but what a wonderful man, what a wonderful family man. He's just, you know, in TCVM, we use our five element theories and he's a all earth, happy, easygoing, smiling, enjoyable man to be around. It, isn't it just one of the biggest compliments that you and I call him friend? You know, he, through yeah. the years that I've taught at Chi, I was a young mom and he welcomed my children in. He found jobs for them. He had my son, who's now 24, um, helping Ray out in the barns with the horses. And he had my daughters packing spoons for the little herbal formulas and stuff like that. And, Yay. and you know, I, I got to go to China with Dr. Shea and his group. He, he for our listeners, he has a, a conference in, he has a conference every year. We just finished ours in September right there in Florida, but sometimes he'll have it in China. And I took my daughter in 2019 and not only is that the amazing way to see China because, you know, he's such a great ambassador, but he was so, you talk about him being a family man, you know, we just ended up calling him Uncle Shen because she, he took Cece under his wing and we joked about finding him, her, a, a Chinese a husband and that sort of thing. She was 14 years old. So, but <laughs> he's always amazed me in his ability to, be so brilliant, yet so approachable and so kind. You know, he's just one of the most humble people I know. He he puts forth his brilliance and then steps back and lets others do their thing. And so he understands that it takes a village, but it's just his impetus in this world is, it, it's there's no words for me. Yeah, I mean, and he's just, you know, he's just so disciplined with it all. You know, I, I don't have the, the actual numbers in front of me but i mean he's written hundreds of publications and perhaps now getting close to a hundred books i mean he just is prolific he's at it he's there every day working it he's doing his research he's just doing so much to try and further understand what tcvm is and how it can be effective so he's he's not done yet he's still going for sure and he always, he cracks me up. He always jokes about his Chinglish and he always jokes about being hard to understand, but it's so easy to understand his heart, especially when you're in the same room with him. I, I find him very easy to understand. So our listeners are going to get a real treat today um, getting to listen to him. Yeah, I actually went to China myself to study acupuncture and I went to three different cities and I went to one agricultural college and it, it was only just. 15, 20 minutes into the course that I realized this is not going to work because if you think Dr. Shea has a case of a bad Chinglish, you should see what comes when I tried to teach, well, I tried to learn acupuncture. There was no learning. So <laughs> <laughs> I had to come to find him over in America to learn how, what we're all about. And I went when I, I've I've learned I learned German in high school, and then I've learned Spanish just from working with all the horse culture and all that kind of thing. I find language is easy, but holy cow, Chinese is so difficult that I mess it up yeah. all the time because it's a tonal language. So I have great admiration for the fact that he trotted over to this country in 1994 and just did a. P how, how do you? How does a person do that? You know, talk about brilliance. Yeah. 
uh, came over here yeah. and bloomed. So yes, I'm so grateful for his Chinglish. <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome, Dr. Shea. We are so happy to have you in our podcast today. John and I have been looking forward to interviewing you again. I know that we had you on first time around when we very started this podcast in April, but we're really excited to have you here to talk about some new stuff. Right. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, and that was April last year, so we've been at it for a little bit. It's been fun. It really has. It really has. We've talked a lot about different cases. We've talked a lot about herbal formulas. We've interviewed... So a ton of people. And I would, I don't know, Dr. Shea, I would love to hear some of what brought you to Chi again, in case people a year and a half ago didn't, didn't hear our story about you, didn't hear your story about how you got to Florida, how you started doing acupuncture there. Because my recollection is you came to the University of Florida to do a PhD, correct? Yes, exactly. I come to or went to University of Florida. 1994, a long time ago. Uh, my initial goal tried to get my PhD training, and so that's initially. And later on, some cases show up, need the acupuncture help, because they already tried Western medicine against the war. The one case I still remember is chronic diarrhea has been hospitalized for five days with inter internal medicine care, but the whole still consistent the bloody diarrhea. So at that point, the conclusion from internist decided to sleep because nothing else able to help. So they connected, wait a minute, I heard there is a guy able to <laughs> do acupuncture around the, your area. Can I ask him to help? Prefer is the shock. Really? Okay, it's, it, it was a try. So that's what I got to get in. So, Dr. Shea, when you first got there in 1994, there was no acupuncture department or anyone that had expertise in acupuncture until you got there. Exactly. So, like, some of you probably don't know, acupuncture is so popular now in the United States. Early 1990s, <laughs> when you talk about acupuncture, academic people, Think about your crazy. What are you talking about? That's the <laughs> <that's> the edge. <laughs> it's really cool. So, so from did the- you uh, you went on to actually develop a, a, a acupuncture department or a course at the university after you got there while you were working on your PhD? How did that evolve? So what happened is case by case that the chronic diarrhea is getting wonderfully healed and the discharge from the hospital. A couple of days later, not only actually saved, I mean, the health of the horse, actually saved the life of the horse. All those internet, okay, there's some value from this medicine. So I think those cases plant some safe on their brain. Plus, in Florida, there is a horse industry is surrounded with us. A large animal hospital pretty well established. So the people are over, uh, I mean, host people from all over the world, I still remember some cases from South America, like Mexico City, shipping the horse come to Florida, come to University of Florida. And the laws, Jackson, I mean, Alabama, most come on a lot of horses actually come into a lot of local horses. So equine industry is very important. In Florida, University of Florida, but to medical care for equine medical care is very, very established. So they want to do something unique. And since the cases with Western medicine couldn't help, and those cases are actually able to help by acupuncture and Chinese medicine. So do not find that this patient decided we should have this direction. We should have acupuncture department. So I'm very lucky. Do not find I just uh, tried to graduate my program, almost graduate, but just right before getting my PhD. And then after the job for me, do you want to be in the faculty of our team? And then that's what we start acupuncture service in Nazi Animal College of Vatuna Medicine, University of Florida. That's 1990. Yeah, that's wonderful. I, I remember I was invited to go to Australia for three years. And I learned from a, a acupuncturist there, just kind of cookbook, putting in points for uh, infertility issues. And it worked so well 
that I came back and tried to find where can I get some more study. And I found you at the university and then began to, with your ambulatory practice, meaning you would go out into the field to various farms, equine farms, and offer that acupuncture service out, out into the Ocala area. Yeah, that's, uh, I have the good memory, John. You, te- you told me a lot about the equine industry in Ocala, Florida. So thank you very much. Yes. Well, and you were you were really the first alternative medicine department in the country at a veterinary school, to my recollection. No other veterinary school was offering alternative medicine of any type. So you've also started a movement over and above Chi University. And my understanding, too, is that your graduate students and your interns, like the great Ronald Coe out at University of California, Davis, they have all, you've you've seeded many veterinary schools with really wonderful practitioners of this medicine. So you started a big movement in the veterinary community, let alone at Chi University, which is huge. Yeah, Jonathan, also is interesting is I was, because this is position, I get invited to so many places to teach acupuncture. Some of the folks want me to talk more. I say, you know, I have a limitation. I did it to my PhD research. I cannot just go to Canada, go to Ireland, go to Europe, or go to Japan. But the, the students said, I, we can go to your place. So that's actually stimulated my motivation. We might be able to build the, the private institution to teach traditional Chinese virtual medicine. So that's what the Qi Institute established, now later on become university. So, Dr. Shea, talk to us a little bit about how that's expanded globally to include many other countries and many other courses available all around the world. Yeah, we, the Chi established uh, first, we primarily teach acupuncture in Reddick, Florida. And there are global people from Europe uh, beg us to say, can we deliver this teaching in Europe? And since everybody travels from Europe, that's uh, many, many flights, so inconvenient for them. So we started fir- first uh, branch in, in Spain. After that, and a lot of countries also said, oh, wait a minute, not only in Spain, can we do more countries? So we're able to establish in Australia and South Africa and uh, so many other Asian countries like Indonesia, Korea, and other countries. So now we have about the 20 plus branch over the world of the Qi University branch. Yeah, that's wonderful. I think if you look on the Qi University site, it speaks of 26 different countries and then six continents. So what a, what a, what a tremendous growth over that period of time. And who knows where else it's going. The Qi University is getting larger and larger and offering more and more courses for veterinarians to take that can, you know, enhance their toolbox, their abilities to be able to use whether they're doing an integrated practice, whether they're doing some conventional medicine and or just PCVM. But that's another thing that you've pioneered there as well as integrating conventional medicine to Chinese medicine. And that I think has been a very, very big plus for for all of us for sure and for the community. Yeah, yeah, integrating that I think is a really key, John, because uh, general medicine is great, but it definitely has limitations. Their limitation is clear diagnostic. For instance, we know this whole diarrhea we just talked about, it, but we don't know dehydration, how much uh, fluid we should give to that horse. And we know this fluid therapy is really critical for diarrhea case. We start calculating with the general medicine now integrate together. We're able to save a lot of life for horses. So Chi is in so many different countries and teaching so many different things. They, you are teaching acupuncture. You're also teaching herbal medicine. There are many different ways of teaching acupuncture. So the balance method is a completely new and different method of doing acupuncture. And Dr. Antonio Alfaro is kind of head of that down in uh, Costa Rica. But there's also food therapy, as you mentioned, which is awesome for skin and cancer and diarrhea. 
and a, a version of Chinese medicine called Tui Na, which is also, we've talked about that in the podcast, but it's sort of a version of mobilizing the body using almost massage and body motion techniques to really, and that I, I remember Dr. John, you told me when you took the course, you couldn't believe how well it worked. Cause I, you know, since I do veterinary spinal manipulative therapy and all that, I was thinking, I don't need this tween stuff, but Chi university offers so many different, different uh, classes for everybody. And it's really, really awesome. Yeah, we just last week had our Twina class opened up for the small animal and for the equine. And it is truly amazing, you know, to to spend uh, case after case, no needles, just using your hands, just using these techniques. And one of the things that I, I usually get asked in that course is, you know, what makes Twina any different than somebody else that's doing body work or massage and so on and so forth? And of course, the answer is we're using traditional Chinese veterinary medicine establishing a diagnosis in order to have a treatment plan using these techniques. So it's a wonderful uh, course. I think they come out with it with, again, having a, an extra tool to be able to use, and not just for the animals that don't tolerate needles, but for all animals as a complement to to our acupuncture work. For sure. And she is now offering master's degrees. I think, Dr. Shade, did you start offering the master's degrees in 2016? Lots of people, including myself, now have a master's in Chinese medicine, but you're also working towards PhDs and you have a lot of students that are t- doing internships there and living on campus and doing research for you. Is that correct? Yes. So one of the motivation for my playoff is I listen to do some of the motivation, the critical probably like everybody else. So acupuncture development or practice really well by private practitioner, by the client, by host people and the small animal pet owner, very, very good, well accept. However, academic people very, very suspect what those people doing on the evidence base. Every single time at a major conference, all those challenge questions from academic, professor, conservative, veterinarian. They need the proof that they say any direct evidence. Yes, I understand there's some research, there's some history in the human, but there's no direct research in the horses and the dog and the cat. So therefore, they, 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 they cannot swallow acupuncture able to help the horse, help the dog and the cat. So that's the motivation for myself. Okay, let's uh, do some research. But how able to get in research? We have to have the university. How to able to university? You have to have the graduate program. So that's my motivation. Establish or work three years. Just the application, application. Finally, we get him granted or credit by Department of of the education of the United States. Okay, you are fine. You can offer your graduate program now. So we're able to get a master's degree, get any on-site, also private on site to do direct clinical research. Now, for instance, we have the direct research show the acupuncture help hip dysplasia in the dog. Has the double blind study with the acupuncture, with the hand control globe, the proof acupuncture significantly pain relief helps those dogs. We have direct horses, help cervical problems, help many, many other clinical conditions. So research actually is very, very important, especially for academic uh, set. I think for the for the Western mind, I've been associated with Qi for 20 years, which is hard to believe, but I've always been amazed at how you understand your position as the bridge of this medicine because western medicine are what we live in america we think western wise we think you know making things as small as possible we think of the microscopic level we want to know what pathogen is involved in an infection and acupuncture is so powerful in its global approach to the body but it's very difficult for westerners to understand how to assess things that way without the science so i think you're positively amazing and brilliant in 
understanding that we uh, as Westerners and a lot of the rest of the world cannot think that way. And that is a wonderful medium. That research is a wonderful medium to help people understand really how this works. I read a quote the other day that says, science is nothing more than trying to explain magic. <laughs> and I kind of feel that way because I I feel like we're all, you know, science is is limited in every walk of life, but I think it's particularly tricky in Chinese medicine because our listeners may or may not be aware of this, but it's hard to do a scientific exper experiment where you're putting needles in one body, you either have to put needles in another body in the wrong places, or you have to not put needles in at all, and then that can be sort of a weakness of the study. So structuring scientific research around acupuncture, I think, is pretty tricky, and, and you, uh, you've you really encouraged a lot of us to do that pretty well, I think. Yeah, because it, again, motivation for those clinicians, including yourself and Dr. Jiangmangua, Motivated. Yes, we, we do come to research. We can't design research. We can't answer the call. So that's amazing to see so many wonderful, motivated clinicians to work together yes. to achieve the goals. We have the research and evidence. You know, one of the things that we mentioned, I believe, in an earlier podcast is the importance is, is you know, Allison and I both have worked for many years studying Chinese medicine and we are really good ambassadors for that. And I know Dr. Shea and I have done some talks to the local community, equestrian community, to the veterinary community. I know Allison has talked to veterinary students. So we are good ambassadors for that. And I encourage you that are equine listeners to reach out in the Chi University under the resource. We've mentioned it several times that you can find a practitioner in your area and grab one that's trained uh, at the Chi University in various disciplines. And you can get them out, invite them out for a chat, a talk, describe the things that are going on, introduce the idea of, of TCVM. And I just did it to a group of 12, 18-year-old equestrians, and they just loved it. They were full attention for an hour listening and learning about it. So that part of it is also important for us to get out and, and keep the word going locally. Yeah, sometimes uh, you know, people ask it, Dr. Xie, Qi University, what's different from other institutes to teach acupuncture? So very simple. <laughs> I just smile. I said, okay, this is almost like you go into Chinese restaurant, okay, in your place. You want American style Chinese restaurant food or you want a more traditional Chinese food? Amazingly, 99% of them, <laughs> they like to try traditional authentic is food, but I tell them, be, be careful. Some of them might be too spicy for you. Some of them mm -hmm. might is not agree with you. So what I try to say is, American food restaurant is great. The average, you know, people able to do, like that taste. But you really wanted to say how this food is really nutritionally or taste is good. You might be, you know, Try out to say what do you think. Maybe like you like it, maybe you don't like it. Like for instance, I speak a very strong language. I call this Chinese, half Chinese, half English. You <laughs> may like my accent, you may hate it. So, <laughs> so that's what the kind of you know. But then we, what we try to achieve is we use the technology to help us from from aging the TCVM. Now going to more than practice, we have the traditional way to work with so many cases, but also with so many Western medicine development advantage, and also we can help integrate East and West together to get our best care for our patient. I yeah, so and I, I, Dr. Shea, I know that you're still seeing cases at the uh, Chi University, equine cases as well as companion animal cases. And you've been doing this a long time, and I, I know that I have my, not necessarily preferences, but I like certain cases that I feel like I can do, uh, you know, I come at it very positively that I'm going to help this animal. So what, 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 what types of diseases, whether it be musculoskeletal or a neural case or a respiratory case, which ones do you look forward to you feel like I am going to 
very much help this animal. And I know it depends on their age and the chronicity and all that, but do you have favorites that you really look forward to treating with a good expectation? For equine practice, I think a top three conditions. Number one is sports medicine, which basically helps the horses perform well. There are no major internal medicine that just cause high some degree of the pain management. Soft tissues, or could it be sometimes could be from neck, cervical, could be from others, but it just the manner to the horse has maximum perform. And that's the one big caseload. Second, for equine practice, we also have some, so many chronic, chronic illness. Like we treat a lot of respiratory disorders in Florida. We have some HIV or asthma syndrome and also has a chronic diarrhea, GI system problems. Something could be renal conditions for equine. And the third group is challenge case. Like Florida, we have a hydrosis, lung sweat. And, and then those are skin cases, allergy case. We do have a lot of the good uh, Results for those two, three group, and for small animal set is a little different. Small animal is more commonly about the geriatric. We saw a lot of geriatric, geriatric patients for small animal practice, or in general, the the older patient have multiple disease, renal conditions, GI conditions, skin conditions, liver conditions, hand weakness, disc seizure. We have multiple issues now. That's the best. From Chinese medicine, work out just like Dr. Alice mentioned about. Western medicine is great with a very clear, with a simple point, with a, almost like a micro, say, a specific pathogen. Chinese medicine more globally, holistic view with the whole body, not only help the disc issues, hand weakness, but also may help renal conditions, other conditions. That's the beauty of Chinese medicine. I agree. Do you have, I know that you have had hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of cases. Do you have a case that, I know that I had one earlier on that it was so successful, a mare that, you know, didn't have a baby for three years. And through our efforts, we were able to get a proper diagnosis, a proper treatment using herbal and electroacupuncture. And we had three babies in a row uh, year after year after that. So it was one of those that I remember so positively the, of helping an animal when things just didn't go right in the conventional sense. So do you have a case maybe you wanted to share that just is always in your memory of, of perhaps a success, maybe even a, a famous horse? So I'm not sure this case you talk about what's a memorable, not the famous horse, but in this is the chronic full foot has a lemnitis problem, lemonitis. Mm. So mm-hmm. usually, laminitis we know chronic laminitis is a challenge. One foot is challenge. Two foot is work. Four feet that's a disaster. It's difficult. Uh, yeah. the, so sure. we able to manage gradually, not only help the pain management, but this horse gradually doing well with the shielding help, with herbal, with acupuncture, with the trainer. This horse actually. Perfect sound become pleasure riding horse. This is that when I first saw this horse about uh, 10 years ago, and when this horse is uh, 80 years old, now this horse, 18 years now, this horse still being written, literally written. So for me, that is a from Western way. The only these three doctors they know cannot help that uh, horse too much, but then we're able to manage make that the chronic laminitis successfully for the past 10 years. Wonderful. That's amazing. The Alice, and you have one that comes to mind for you? Oh, gosh. Why don't you go ahead with yours? Well, one of the things that I really enjoyed during my regular conventional work of, of 28 years was working on the babies. And, you know, they're so malleable. They come out maybe looking terrible and within a few weeks they straighten up you know remarkably but i remember several of them two of them distinctly that both the veterinarians that were attending the owner and the manager all said let's euthanize it at day one and i was asked to just come in and consult and 
on both those cases that are, those horses went on to be successful racehorses. We did everything with them from Twena to acupuncture to herbal to massage to everything that we could. And they, they responded so beautifully. And that's a great memory that I have that you can take an animal that they think is not going to be anything. It's, it's more easier to euthanize to turn it around and, and have a good uh, outcome. Yeah, I do I talk about famous horse now. I have rather, actually, this, the famous horse from Mexico City is Olympic winner, the fat horse. They get him from Mexico City to not animal hospital in North Florida. The student cannot touch this horse. And they have their own drummer, home people handle their daily care. Only people able to touch from university is doctors. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. Dr. Is our equine service chief? They saw this horse. They just don't know what's wrong with this horse. <laughs> they, they use every single diagnostic, bone scan, X-ray, ultrasound. All those diagnostics are available. That's 15 years ago. Not wrong with this horse, but is this horse limping? So since there's some, str- I was there. So and then so oh, maybe let doctor say take this horse. Chris, what he said. So I examined this horse, I scan basically. I find this horse primarily is left stifle and the right front shoulder. So that's my diagnosis. I clinically, this horse just lumping on the left rear. Western medical examination, everything's normal in terms of diagnostic image, blood work. So this horse has two nights. Every day we do acupuncture. Five days later, this horse perfect sound. And they ship him back to Mexico City. <laughs> so this, yeah, this is the famous horse. We're able to use Chinese medicine. Actually, when the Western medicine non diagnostically for those learned horse, now we can use different way to diagnostic horse because they have the different method. Western medicine is very specific. Chinese medicine looking for whole body, not so called the chi. Since Western medicine, everything is normal. So it's not a structural damage. And then there's a non-structural allergy blockage. We call that the chi stagnation. So we basically manipulate with the body's own white, white forces or the chi. Now use acupuncture, herbal, and the trina technique. That the chi the flow is normal. When the chi flow is normal, blockage goes away. So therefore, force becomes sound. My clients too, that... Uh... Really, sometimes when you you can't find a diagnosis, it's actually better for Chinese medicine because it means that the problem, as you were describing, is is at an energetic level. It isn't at a physical level. Once things become x-ray changes, once things become blood work changes, then it is much harder to fix with any medicine, including TCVM. But I love when we can't figure out what the problem is because I think rebalancing works so effectively that way. I don't know what your experience is with that, John, but. Well, I just, just to mention, you know, another case that I'm working on now, it happens to be a reproductive case, but for three years, uh, this mare actually, she was four and she had a baby and she's a valuable mare. And then three years, no baby. And at one of the finest reproductive equine clinics in the country. And for three years, did everything, everything they thought possible to help this mare to cycle better so that she can have a foal. And so finally, they just washed their hands and said, we we, we cannot do this. So then uh, now I have an opportunity to work with it with TCVM and do. And uh, I make this this comment to my, my group this weekend. I said, I'm 73 years old and I can still make a baby. So I'm going to put everything together to try and have a foal with this mare. And I feel very confident because she's nine. She's a tough, tough wood horse. You can't get around her very easily, but so far so good. So with the acupuncture and herbal, next year we breed her, we're going to gonna go ahead and have a baby. And that that's exciting. And like I said, you mentioned too, a lot of times the calls that I get now are situations where they're not getting everything they want out of their conventional uh, practitioner or their conventional method. So they want another uh, alternative approach or work together to try and get a good outcome. 
Yeah, I think one of the, I think the case that I can come up with that is probably one of my most exciting was that I saw a two year old, and I think this was twenty two thousand eight or nine, that was very neurologic, and I asked the trainer if he would take the horse into the track so I could electroacupuncture him on a daily or on a monthly basis when I was there, and it was a little nondescript bay horse, no white, little white hairs on his head, just plain plain dude, and. That trainer had had horses run in the Preakness. He'd not won a Preakness before, but he was a very successful trainer. And that little horse ended up being his most successful horse. He was a multiple stakes winner. And, you know, I treated him like he had some cervical problems and he ended up not having cervical problems. <laughs> so mm-hmm. a three thousand dollars race when you see your little horse go wire to wire is pretty exciting. He won multiple stakes races. So it is it is really fun when we can help things like that. It is wonderful. And just recently, I've had several cases that the horse just doesn't want to get out of the gate. It just doesn't really feel comfortable or something's wrong. You know, wins its first race and then comes back and has a a fourth, a seventh and a ninth. So they send them up and look. And the only thing that I see that's outstanding is if you do your little scan around the hip and you get five plus and they try to kick you, that's where the pain is. And that's why they don't want to come out of the gate. They don't want a posture to go through that difficulty. So we have an easy fix. We have acupuncture, we have herbal, we have twina, we have liniments, we have a number of different things and you can turn them around beautifully. And this one particular filly went on to win her next three races. So very, very rewarding when we find things that are, you know, pretty obvious and we can go about our, our method to, to, to heal it. Dr. Shea, you've done a lot of really neat research on your herbal formulas. And for example, for our listeners, Dr. Shea makes a a herbal formula that is really wonderful at helping immune system, boosting the immune system, but it also has ingredients in it that inhibit tumor growth. And so for those of us who do Chinese medicine, we have something called the formulary, which is a book of talking to us about how these herbals work and and giving us some of those nuances. And under that that formula in our formulary is all kinds of research that this formula helps the body at a cellular level. They can measure the fact that our white blood cells, some of our white blood cells and our floating around immune system stuff actually rises when you use this formula. So that's some of the research that Dr. Shea does. And he does he's done all kinds of research on his formulas. But Dr. Shea, why don't you tell us a little more about what's going on at Chi University now and some of the exciting research that either has been done in the last five or 10 years or the one about the stem cells. I think a lot of people use stem cells for their horses in injections for tendon ligament problems. Why don't you talk a little bit about what's going on at Chi right now in order to, I don't know, help our understanding with acupuncture? So, yeah, great. So the cancer patient, that's a bigger one for small animal practice, also even for human medicine. We do have some great formulation help the cancer patient help not only actually quality life. Sometimes we're able to make the cancer go away. And so it's always for myself, why is this the tumor go away? Is the herbal radical the cancer cells? Or is it just we believe it to work? So we have the one team, we have the three doctors, master degree with the supervisor together, work on those formulations specifically for cancer cells. And we do find the herbal come back and likely kill the cancer cells compared with chemotherapy drug. Herbal something actually is the better. Depends on uh, where you sell from. Sometimes we use uh, muscle, carcinoma cells, some other cells as a factor, tumor cells. We compare some some of those herbal ingredients work in more potency than when the chemotherapy. And some others actually able to combine with the chemotherapy, make the chemotherapy even more potent. So we're getting so excited now, actually, we can say that. Why those tumors go away? Because actually, this uh, herbal able to help the, uh, directly kill the cancer cells. And then some of also, a lot of things we work on, those uh, acupuncture and herbal, are also able to help immune stimulation. When the immune system is stronger, 
make the body itself mobilize the own energy to modular the counter growth. So the, we do have a lot of papers already published. So it's uh, very exciting to say that the evidence space. And correct me if I'm wrong, but are are you working on a, an instrument that would help us understand where acupuncture acupuncture points are in animals? I mean, I think there's been instruments like that out there, but you know, us Western medicine folks love to see that sort of evidence. Sometimes, is that something that's in the works, or what I, was I mistaken? Yes, the, this research basically is the that spot we call acupuncture point. How that spot is important is really. Can we poke just any rhombus size, or we hide to find that spot? Yes, that is area what we call acupuncture point. So we identify, okay, this is the site, acupuncture point. What's different from surrounding tissues is a non-acupuncture point. We do find that this electrical signal is different, and also some underneath the tissues there is the cell position different. So that makes acupuncture point is so unique, so special. Those is the point discover thousands of years. The reason they just practice, practice, there are some reason behind. Now, from a cellular level, we now, they feel different. They feel different. They generate the, the, this electrical current different. So that's what we're able to demonstrate. That is a location is very unique, very special. So that makes me smile because, you know, we're we're having this beautiful instrument that that assesses the fact that the electrical current of an acupuncture point is different than the rest of the body. And we're using science and we say, oh, look at this. We have proved this. And it is something that the human body has been able to assess for thousands of years. So it, it uh, makes me smile because I love the fact that the science proves what you know, our 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 inner wisdom has known for very many centuries. It's really cool. Any other neat things? And Dr. That are Shea, did are you did you also engage in the idea of trying to quantify chi? In other words, actually get a physical measurement of chi. Is that still ongoing? Is that think Richard still ongoing? We try to use the quantum science. So the quantum science that we try to use failed. Not if, you know, the, the earth is filled. We have to isolate or make the, the field to like a separate them. That's if we're mm-hmm. still unregistered. Hopefully, we're able to find in a pure field. That is a mechanic field from acupuncture, meridians, and point, which still is, uh, is working on it. And then it's also it's very exciting. That's fabulous. Well, Dr. Shea, thank you so much for joining us today. I, I, I love all the information you have. I love hearing and sharing with our listeners what's going on at Qi and just how much this medicine is advancing across the globe because of our understanding of it better. And that is 300% thanks to you and your vision 30 years ago. <laughs> I guess my math isn't very good, but your vision a very long time ago to to help bring what you learned as a young person in your culture to the rest of the world so we can heal better. And that's really what it's all about is global healing. Well, John, don't you think that that was the best interview we could have had? Dr. Shea is amazing. He is no less than amazing every time we talk to him. And that was a great, uh, that was a great talk. Don't you think? I think I thoroughly enjoyed it. And every time I'm all ears when he's, he's speaking, because um, he just has a wealth of information and knowledge about TCVM and about a lot of other things, um, mm-hmm. you know, I, in life. So all good. I've told my clients many times as I'm talking about him, and this is, it, it's the truth, but I repeat it regularly. I just love standing next to him and just sort of hoping that some of that goodness just washes over me. <laughs> it, <laughs> it makes my life better because he's got that kind of energy. He's just amazing. Yeah. So, so we want to go on about how to find, when people want to find practitioners for, of TCVM, anybody linked to Dr. Shea would be under tcv.com, which is stands for traditional Chinese veterinary medicine.com. And if you go on that website, that is the Chi University website. And there is a place over there to, and it has practitioner, find a practitioner by you. So using that link, you, a person in Iowa 
but find whoever is closest to them that can practice this medicine. And it'll, it'll separate out. There's a lot of small animals. There's way more small animal vets in the world than there are equine vets. So if you're looking for a horse practitioner, it will help you get to it. Somebody who can practice on horses. Yeah. And you want to, if you want to make it simple in the Google world, just Google T university. And when it comes up, you can go right to resources and under resources, you'll find a practitioner. So it's a very simple step. You don't have to worry um, about finding it. Look at look at you being all technological. <laughs> so impressive. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. All right. Well, <laughs> all right, John. We'll see you in November. 